Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 12 of In The Flow. We are your hosts. My name is Courtney. And my name is Hannah. And we are the Eureka Effect, the podcast where we ponder... Oh, wait, wait, that, where's big that coming from? Big ideas from our little apartment. Oh, that's like our original branding. You gotta catch wow. up and get with the times here. <laughs> Holy shit, that was like some verbatim that was in the back of my skull. That just like popped up to the forefront. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, we actually don't have... Um, we don't even have like a tagline these days because we just literally shoot the shit. I know. I know, we really don't. But you know what we do have? Our very first sponsor. And cue the ad read. (laughs) How exciting, our very first ad read ever. Wow. I know, we just recorded that and like did it 50 times and I felt so professional the whole time in Mm -hmm. your bedroom on your bed recording our first ad. I know. And we, yeah, we waited a long time for this and we Mm -hmm. manifested Mm -hmm. this like from the beginning. Like I'm not even joking that... The ad read might have sounded, like, slightly robotic, but we are huge fans of this app. It's incredible. Yes, oh my gosh, wholeheartedly love it. I used to do a lot of the technical stuff, and I don't even, I don't do anything. I just click a couple buttons, and we upload it, and there we go. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier than the, what, the other streaming platform that we were using before. We won't mention them. We're not gonna, we're <laughs> yeah. not gonna call anyone out, you know, but yeah, we're, we just, hate we're just gonna send, tell you that Anchor, you know, de- deserves a little more luck. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, it's it's a gift. Yeah, it's a gift. I'm sure. super excited. Yeah, I guess, like we said, we don't necessarily have that much planned out today as we did the last time. We mm-hmm. talked a lot about, well, the whole episode. Was that the Affirmations episode, or no? Uh, yeah, I think it was. I don't remember. It, it, yeah, my head. typically, I don't know, like, when we call we call the the podcast in the flow because a lot of the times when we just get talking a lot of cool topics come up and we've definitely been having some interesting conversations recently about a range of topics so we'll try to uh i don't know see where we can go from there but one major thing we wanted to talk about which hopefully someday they'll sponsor us is uh workaway.info yes workaway.info right yep oh my goodness if you guys have not heard of this website and you are at all like a victim of wanderlust yes, like ourselves wanting to be a nomad then i highly recommend you check out workaway.net so it's essentially it is like different hostels and different um like a lot of them are a a non not-for-profit organizations or hotels Mm -hmm. or like animal rescues or big farms like Mm -hmm. and there are fruit yeah housework intentional community yeah nannying that's a i would love to nanny i mean I wouldn't want to do it, like, long-term for a couple mm-hmm. of years, but I definitely feel like it would be fun to do for a few months. Yes, and you don't even need, like... So, I don't know if any of you can relate to this, but, like, I've always, 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 always wanted to travel, and I was like, what job can I get that we'll would allow me, me to travel? Yeah. But I also can't, don't have the attention span. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, someday I do want to, like, start a business and this and that, but I couldn't find something even that I'd want to narrow down on, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? The I point is we're neurodivergent, okay? <laughs> and <laughs> yes. yes, and essentially I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to travel without having a mm-hmm. passive income in the mm-hmm beautiful thing about work away is that some places even offer paid Paid, positions but even then it makes it easier like i don't even know it's like my prayers have been answered Mm -hmm. like you guys seriously need to check it out there's endless opportunities Mm -hmm. to travel and not only travel but work and have your living expenses handled just for like helping out essentially this is definitely not sponsored but i will also say it's awesome because there's lots of opportunities not only Uh, worldwide but also within Canada and most of them that I have seen uh, require a minimum of one month so you're Mm -hmm. basically paying to get wherever you're going so if you're in your home country you could be you know what I mean paying for gas money to Mm -hmm. go work at a job for a couple months and then just come back home like that's Mm -hmm. sick you could do that all over I'm sure there's much more in the states I was looking at Canada specifically but we could go from BC to Calgary to the Yukon Mm -hmm. to uh ontario to quebec and then come back and work in friggin new brunswick if we wanted to exactly and plan it out like it's so um informative and and such a great resource and it's good for people that don't really know what they want to do and all they know Mm -hmm. all they know is that they want to travel and like i think if you're anything like us like why we were like so 
hesitant and miserable in our jobs is because it seems like it's the end all be all there's no light at the end of the tunnel like yeah sure i'll go fucking scrub floors Mm -hmm. and you know what another thing that i just thought of is most of them are barely asking for work like they want like yeah like a one place i seen in hawaii is asking for 17 hours a week that's crazy of work and most of them are even like no more than 25 Mm -hmm. like it's not like you're gonna be slaving away you're doing like you're helping out around the house or cutting fruit or farming doing stuff that you'd probably already be kind of doing for Mm -hmm. yourself but i feel like when you do stuff in a community aspect too because a lot of these places have more than one work away at a time so you're meeting people you're doing stuff for other people like when you're cooking a meal it's not just for you it's Mm -hmm. like a community it's more rewarding and that's something that we both have been asking for like we both want to like get a van and like live in our vans but like Mm -hmm. we were kind of lacking that like i do want to do that but it's kind of hard especially i don't know how long um covid's gonna go on but like it's gonna be hard to go out there and like meet people and really explore and we Mm -hmm. really wanted like we said in other podcasts to find a community and this Mm -hmm. is the easiest way and like there's so many places that they're like oh like whatever you like to do like what do you want to do how how can you help us Mm -hmm. and it's like there's nothing more rewarding or like Mm -hmm. welcoming and like Mm -hmm. i don't know (laughs) i yeah i feel like people are like community um like they're uh, they're there's social. a certain type of people that go on there <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and i am super excited for the idea of mm. like living or learning from people who are on an intentional community yes because a lot of them offer skills there's a certain mm-hmm. tab that says like oh i think it's culture or something or i don't know like yeah 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 i know what you're talking about yes for sure mm-hmm. they they sort of list what you will gain by volunteering Mm -hmm. or staying at that place Mm -hmm. and like you were mentioning before i like it because it's good for um those of us with shorter attention spans like Mm -hmm. if three months is the sweet spot for me six months sometimes if i'm really enjoying it but Mm -hmm. if you tell me i'm doing some for three months i'm gonna go hard yeah exactly because there's a light at the end of the tunnel like that that is the exact motivation Mm -hmm. that i feel like both of us need to really get your ass in gear and like feel satisfied knowing that this isn't permanent because i think there maybe it's commitment issue or i don't know where it's coming from but like it always has scared me yeah this is i don't know it's just incredible that there's something like this Mm -hmm. out there and you don't need to have any skills but there's even places are super cool like i've seen certain people that are looking for like oh if you have any knowledge with like marketing and stuff like that like whatever Mm -hmm. skill you have or whatever skill you can harness while you're saving up money for travel will come in handy yeah for sure that's like as simple as cooking and Mm -hmm. sweeping right you don't even have to be knowledgeable or take taking a marketing course to get going yes any imagine if you were yeah specialized in a skill Mm -hmm. already and had that to offer i mean we have skills it's not like we're not we have nothing to offer mm-hmm. but i'm just saying for people who are a little further on their journey this could be like exactly a, a, a fast track basically to mm-hmm. the life of your dreams honestly yeah and it's 44 dollars a month there are some hidden fees and monthly payments um no I'm <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's only 44 dollars a month or i think you can for get a like whole a package year. deal or oh yeah for a year i'm sorry no I'm it's 44 dollars for a whole them. year yeah. yeah and um you can do a couple's one and i also was looking in the terms and conditions and you can sign up as like i think you can travel as a group oh cool and, and get a discounted rate i'm assuming um i don't know if it's because they don't cover the travel um, no yeah but uh i don't i don't know i don't I don't understand if you sign up as a group or like there's a, I think there's a way that you can all apply to the same place. Work away, like, yeah. Yes, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. super cool. And now I'm really, really thrilled and excited because either way, I do want to get a van. But like mm-hmm. we were even talking last night. I don't even care what happens. Like at one point, I really do want to go to Hawaii because yes. I'm looking for like internal physical healing as well as um i'm sorry lost my uh, train of thought there um i'm looking for like physical and spiritual healing Mm because i don't know who if i've mentioned this on the podcast before but my crohn's uh i don't think so i don't think you've gone into real detail about it honestly yeah well essentially i'm gonna make a long story short i want to make a tiktok account so i can kind of reach out and find the people and the resources Mm -hmm. that i need Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to get off of uh, pharmaceuticals and Mm -hmm. heal my Crohn's naturally. Mm -hmm. And I've been really looking for an opportunity to find 
someone who knows what they're doing and work away seems like i've seen so many opportunities that are like really intriguing like mm-hmm. because they do a little write-up it's so organized guys like, i know the information is so good i love yes. i love sitting there reading through everything uh, yeah I, I didn't even get bored when it was like a wall of text i was like here we go baby like, i know the way that it's organized the way that it's split up and it's super like you can see the reviews mm-hmm. of um work awayers that have stayed there and then the hosts will leave comments and you can really get a feel for like what you're experience Mm -hmm. is going to be and what to look forward to and like it's just oh my goodness it almost seems it's not but it seems like it's too good to be true but it Mm -hmm. is a legit thing because we both seen it on tiktok but we didn't really look into it until the other yeah i i've fooled around with it a little bit but like i obviously the other night we really went in depth and like looked looked through Mm -hmm. all the opportunities and and did our like our due diligence on it and oh my gosh it's definitely a crazy good opportunity for sure i'm like mm-hmm. super interested in a paid position for like a couple months somewhere because mm-hmm. why why not why not yeah i guess it's like we could either like i don't know i would i would really go anywhere like i'm mm-hmm. so open to the mm-hmm. different opportunities as long as i can like i guess my issue another thing that i wanted to outline with my crohn's is i have to take a needle once a week and uh so I can only pick up, I think, one to two boxes at a time. Mm-hmm. And, like, unfortunately, it kind of keeps me locked down in one place. Mm-hmm. Or, like, I, I don't know. It, it's hard for me to gather the information on how that would work if I wanted to be on this drug and travel. And I feel like I'm hindered yeah. by it, essentially. And that's why I want to come off of it. Mm-hmm. But, like, I would stay in Canada if I could get it, even if we went out to BC. Like, I really... Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I feel like it opened more opportunity finding work away. Like, it, it mm-hmm. kind of... Uh, yeah, opened your eyes to the fact that there, it's it's more than doable. Like, this yes. is like a fantasy, I feel. Especially yeah. for you because you have the, um, the anchor of having <laughs> to stay in one place with the, with the Humera. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean... It's as, just a challenge, though. I, well, I it's know, a challenge even when you're not traveling. That's the thing I was going to bring up. Like, the, like the, the process of it is a lot you know what i mean like mm-hmm. i don't want to give myself a needle every week and yeah you have to keep it a certain temperature and blah, yeah blah, that's blah. another like, thing all... it has to stay in the fridge and it's mm-hmm. so expensive i think it's like two grand a box and mm-hmm. i don't know this for sure but i am almost a hundred percent sure they're not gonna give me a supply of it like no, because it's so expensive not. and it's probably mm-hmm. like a Mm-hmm. a threat so mm-hmm. i don't know if there's anybody listening to the podcast that uh, happens to be any sort of like spiritual healer or um, naturopathic doctor mm-hmm. or holistic mm-hmm. psychologist even because i think that these problems are even rooted from my mental health because mm-hmm. i see generational really, curses yes and, so on and i see on. it like correlating with my adhd in Mm -hmm. senses like it's inhibiting me to take care of myself or like these are why i'm receiving these blocks like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is because of um energetic blockages maybe that that manifest physically yeah in your body and so on yeah Mm -hmm. i definitely like there's i would like to hear a variant opinion or uh, a someone more educated than us yeah for sure or people that are not going to just try to give me um prescription medication because i don't i am not Mm -hmm. receiving the help that i need yeah here where we live no, and like i fight for you to just get the bare minimum for sure as with many people it's like screaming mm-hmm, into mm-hmm. the abyss but mm-hmm. i feel like shit all of the time and mm-hmm. i don't know if it's because of my adhd burnout or if it's i feel like it's just inflammation in my body like yeah. it's yeah my my joints hurt i'm mm-hmm. weak i'm shaky i and then all of my like symptoms flare up at once mm-hmm. and it's an inflammation issue which mm-hmm. i know comes down to nutrition but i'm yeah. having an issue with my nutrition because but, of yeah. my mental health i suppose mm-hmm. i don't know i'm yeah. doing better but you know what i mean oh my god i feel like we're both doing so much better i was oh, yeah. ordering food every single day multiple times a day at one point <laughs> bless, bless me you. sorry <laughs> um and like we have both been cutting down on meat i wouldn't say i'm full vegetarian or full oh. vegan but i'm certainly doing the best i can to get there um and we just have to take a quick little pause here we will be right back folks okay so that was actually the pharmacy calling about the humera speak of the devil i <laughs> know uh, actually it wasn't even the pharmacy so this is oh. so weird i whenever people ask me about it i don't even know how to explain it like there's avicare is um 
what owns Humira, which mm-hmm. is the drug that I'm on, yes. and it's a company. I don't know if it owns other drugs, but it has like it different must, employees yeah. mm-hmm. within it, and some of them call to. So I I can only afford one box a month on the New Brunswick drug plan. Yes. That's what covers my drug, but yeah. it doesn't cover the full expense. So I need to get one box delivered from the company itself. They like sponsor me a box. Oh, oh my god, this is so complicated. Yes, but there's more than that. There's multiple people. There's someone that calls me and asks about my symptoms and then there's another insurance girl that will call me and just ask about if my insurance has changed Hmm. and yeah it's very very strange it has nothing to do with the pharmacy they just send the box to the pharmacy but it's so above my head like they used to call me more than what they do now like they would call me repeatedly and ask about my symptoms and I had one like worker that Mm -hmm. like I don't think she's there anymore because I haven't heard from her, but she would be the one that was checking up on me. Oh my gosh, imagine being the person who has to make that phone girl- call. Like, that girl sounded so like, and it's here, and yeah, yeah you're doing it Monday. I and never used to do that until recently, like, because huh. I never, ha- I was only on one box. The other girl would just be like, oh, like, are you taking your needle on time? And like, yeah. what's going on? And she would text me. Now I have random <laughs> people text me when I'm supposed to take it. I don't take oh it on time. Oh my gosh. That's that the reason so why I'm crazy. fucking my health up, though, because I don't take it on time. And everyone's like, you got to take it on time. And I was like, well, I'm not and then they're like why and I'm like I don't know up until recently and I'm like oh yeah I have motherfucking ADHD like Mm -hmm. get off my back Mm -hmm. like or what what can you do to help me because yeah well they do I mean the doctors and everyone they're like oh do you have someone to remind you and I'm like I've done that yeah they can't force me to take it like i know the thing is like okay one minute one minute i'll do it exactly because it's something that you don't it's uncomfortable so you're gonna put off anyway yeah i do that with stuff all the time and that's not something that i'm literally hurting yourself yes injecting into my own body and you're feeling it go in like you've described it to me it doesn't sound like a good time it hurts at all no wonder you're selectively forgetting yeah. about it you know what i mean because that's yeah. just your brain trying to protect you from that fucking little trauma every exactly, week exactly exactly and it's like a given that of all things i'm going to procrastinate that and i yeah. try to explain that to my gastro mm-hmm. and like there's another drug called remicade that i wanted to switch over to but mm-hmm. anyway that's just well we'll it, fucking change the subject i guess <laughs> no i, but I are- think people are interested in this because mm-hmm. i I am. I'll sit here and talk to you about it. People don't know. Like, I I don't have any conditions conditions besides the mental health where I have had to... This is a struggle. That sounds stressful. That's stressful. People need to be aware because that's... You have one ailment. There are people who are going through far worse than... You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who are... It, it's it's it an is important a battle. issue. Yeah, yeah. I guess it is something that I'd like to bring to light because it's I have suppressed it my whole life because mm-hmm. I was diagnosed when I was seventeen. So it's kind of like, and I've always I've I'm the mo- most control of my in my life of my life in my life right now like yeah, yeah. when i was younger it was like i had no sort of systems mm-hmm. in place i had mm-hmm. nothing i was just running by the fucking seat of my pants or whatever yeah. the i feel like the doctors didn't make seem it, of yeah <laughs> i feel like the doctors don't make it clear as to what's actually going on uh, oh my on. god i just started really understanding what yeah. it is like and i've had it since i was 17 and mm-hmm. uh yeah i've always kind of disrespected not disrespected but i didn't manage my health properly because mm-hmm. at that point i had no clue that i had adhd yeah. and like it was just kind of like a shame thing like oh mm-hmm. I, I don't take my were, needle properly yeah. and now I have these adverse effects because yeah. I do get cysts and I get these issues that mm-hmm. I I know that were related to me smoking, drinking mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, eating like shit yeah. and not taking my needle on time and smoking cigarettes especially mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. they told me every time to quit and now I'm kind of getting to the point where I don't really I can't even remember the last time I smoked a cigarette which, yeah which is awesome for sure but it's, it's baby steps and your mental mm-hmm health is connected to your physical health and when i was not well i was self-sabotaging and hurting myself all Mm -hmm. of the time Mm -hmm. i I think a lot of people use like food alcohol as a coping mechanism but i mean the adverse effects that i would experience from that are just normal human you know what i mean Mm -hmm. but where you have the crohn's going on it's a little more detrimental to to you because it's a a more direct effect you can feel it more immediately exactly yeah it, it's and i would ignore it because mm. i knew i was doing it to myself and mm. like kind of make a joke out of it or like belittle what was going on mm-hmm. a lot of the times Coping because i had that yeah. like 
shame because mm-hmm. it's like every time I go to the doctor, the people are calling me, like the Avi care workers. Like I, I would lie a lot of the times because like I just was sick of hearing it. Like yeah. I'm not taking it on time, and I don't know what to do. Like because they'll be like, well, what can we do to help you? And I was like, I don't know. Yeah. Like some weeks I'm good, but 99.9 percent of the time mm-hmm. I'm fucking that needle up. And they mm-hmm. tell me how important it is to take it on time. Like, yep. man, I, I. I have to take medication every night for my anxiety, and Mm -hmm. I feel like I don't take it every night. Like, I can't remember. I'll think about taking it, and then I can't remember if I took it or not, or I'll go to take it, and then I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna do this first, and then it's gone forever. And, like, like I said, we're both neurodivergent to some Mm -hmm. extent. I don't know what the fuck is actually wrong with me, but, like, it's just Mm. a pill. You just swallow it. It's easy. Again, well, you're, when you're stabbing days are yourself together, though, that's with a needle. Hard. Yeah, true. True. I could never take like even the birth control. I've never taken a birth control pill. Like I've been on the patch mm-hmm. and the needle because like my mom just right from the get go was like, "You're the there's no way. Isn't. There's yeah. no way I'm gonna take that. Mm-hmm. Like there's not." And, and I've the- been on pills and I'm supposed to take every day, and I'm like, I don't take them every mm-hmm. to every doctor. This has always been an issue. Yeah, I never yeah. finished a. F- I never finished antibiotics either. Never ever. finished a prescription. I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing mm. either. Is well, it a blessing I mean, in disguise for for certain pharmaceuticals yeah. for sure. AKA Adderall. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? The free and legal meth. Of, yeah. of <laughs> doctors everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Another uh, thing Subset, that yeah. yeah, I don't like. Okay, so I'm so on the fence. So I'm prescribed Adderall, and I wanted to be on it. I felt like I needed it. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time when I was really keen for it because of, like, how hard I was being on myself and how alienated or, like, the pressure of perfectionism, like, I Mm -hmm. felt like I needed it to function because of the times that I experimented with it. Mm -hmm. I've always thought that I needed it, so I took it. I liked the way I felt. I got prescribed it, and then everything, like, changed. It kind of did its due diligence in a way because I stopped wanting to party and I stopped yeah like I feel like it slowed a lot of that behavior Compulsive, down yeah for but sure. at the same time like I don't know I don't either there's a lot I felt like I wasn't my myself when I took it like mm-hmm. a, a part of like me or being ADHD is I'm expressive as hell mm-hmm and like it's it kind of hinders that but at the it same time it, it withdraws me yeah. too more often than mm-hmm. i am because i do get withdrawn and you can tell when i'm obviously up here versus mm-hmm. down there i wear my heart on my sleeve but mm-hmm. i don't want to be like a. I don't know i felt almost like robotic or mm-hmm. like i just am not hu- human i don't feel i feel icky <laughs> yeah there's a disconnect there for sure mm-hmm. um i feel like too it's important to note that adderall does um number on your uh intestines your and yeah and your your digestive system mm-hmm. which sucks because oh yeah you have crohn's so yeah. literally this medication that's supposed to help you manage the adhd which is supposed to help you manage the crohn's in turn because it'll yeah if you focus is making the crohn's worse crazy and you no one's willing to listen to you about that yes. doctors seem to have to not like hello man i wish i could like bring you with me to like help me tell get the some doc- stuff i can listen to this podcast yeah, hello but, sir what's his name uh, no tell me his name but. <laughs> <laughs> dr vin nykirk excuse me sir <laughs> Please stop invalidating my friend's <laughs> fucking illnesses. Like, I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to be cruel in case no, this ever did not. find his uh, find Practice him. But I did try ears. the best that I possibly could to describe how I feel. Like the mm-hmm. Adderall is making my uh, Crohn's worse, and it was mm-hmm. completely brushed over. Like. Like, I'm just yeah. like, is there, what are the side effects? And then I, I said how the Adderall is making me extremely um, anxious and withdrawn and overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. I specifically said the Adderall. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to give me, while well, he did prescribe me this anti-anxiety. And I was really hesitant. And then he basically wanted me, what did he say? He was like, oh, like, I, it's something you got to learn how to take risks or something like that because i was just like oh it sounds like i don't know i don't want to put i don't know the the verbiage that yeah. i use but i just was uncomfortable with the whole thing like mm-hmm. i don't feel heard like i yeah. don't you know what i mean the problem like, is is this is your whole life experience and he gets 30 seconds of it mm-hmm. or th- 30 minutes of it sorry every how often have you talked I to him now i've talked to him twice i've had him once and, and how long was there in between that Oh my god, a, a month. So and imagine my how many other patients, normal. and mm-hmm. you know what I mean, that he he's told you that he, that that's enough for one session because it's a fucking lot, mm-hmm. and he I think he'll eventually come around. Like it's 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 
it's rough to be a doctor i'm yeah, sure oh my i'm God. very sure yeah, and i know that i unleashed because like he basically was like well this is too much like i've already mm-hmm. stayed after hours like blah 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 and like i i do understand that mm-hmm. i wasn't like upset by it because there was a lot that i was trying to get out but yeah. like i feel like he was asking me like some sort of like adderall questionnaire because, yeah like, like reading and, like, when i was trying to off. explain like uh, the correlation between the symptoms and stuff he's like okay but what about the burnout and i was like well since i've went down mm-hmm. like the psychiatrist recommended yeah like i feel better mm-hmm. but i well, i didn't time <sighs> i mean because i take it every day wink yeah. wink yeah <laughs> um because i'm i'm really i do not want to take it i don't like no, this is not I, something that i feel like i need but there's just days where i'm like okay like i would like to get something done and it's it helps me focus without becoming like i'm like physically uncomfortable when i'm sitting at my desk even yeah. if i enjoy the activity sometimes it's, it's been really hard mm-hmm. for me to get into projects that have lost the sparkle of mm-hmm. like your the, skin the, starts the to device. fall and you just have to be literally doing anything else yes but that. i'm like literally like yeah. fucking around with anything else mm-hmm. and it's it's i have like notes and shit up i try to remind myself to stay focused mm-hmm. but it's like it's mm-hmm. i don't know and it's then i'm like how rough. am i ever going to mm-hmm. be successful like that's my biggest fear is like because of my mm-hmm. i feel that way too because like you like to journal a lot mm-hmm. and that's kind of your art form mm-hmm. and i like to draw and like there are times where it's 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 hard to get through a whole fucking mm-hmm. piece man mm-hmm. there's i have so much unfinished stuff i mm-hmm. remember i was showing ryan my my drawing books and he's like wow you don't finish a lot huh mm-hmm. i was like yeah it's almost like i'm a little bit adhd honestly yeah. because i'll literally draw a circle don't like it next mm-hmm. page mm-hmm. like and i'll do that for like three pages yeah yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah it's well that's why it's kind of nice that you did get the tablet i know now you can edit and so go back easier, and it's, yeah yeah instead of like abandoning abandoning mm-hmm. abandoning abandoning i know i'm so bad for as soon as there's like one wrong stroke on the paper i'm like well it's shit yeah i know me too shit. even like when i'm doing something that doesn't matter like when yeah. i'm writing a name on an a envelope grocery or list something. Story. Yeah. oh my god Ooh, yeah. why is that bleh, resonating so hard i, I hate that it's like it's not ugh, it's not the way that i wanted it to be or is mm-hmm. it like i feel like there's a part of it that's like well i know that i'm more capable of writing nicer than this so yeah like yeah. but it's like but why who cares at the mm-hmm. end of the day mm-hmm. I know there's a fine line between um, focusing and hyper focusing, and then there's not focusing at all. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. And it's, why is like life, a three moves? I know why is life literally just a compilation of those three things? All yeah, over and over again? hyper focused, blah, disgusting. Get that away from me, or like in the flow. Yeah, yeah. There's those three levels of like your relationship with whatever activity you're mm-hmm, doing, mm-hmm. and that's it's hard to balance that out. Like I do have faith that both of us will be successful. I'm sure oh, that God, yeah, for there. Sure. This is very 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 common like especially mm-hmm. with we're trying to make more tiktoks and stuff and like the algorithm wants you to make two to three a day and like i do believe that once mm-hmm. we develop more it'll be easier to do that but as it stands right now like it still counts when we're doing stuff like we don't oh, have a flow sure. figured out or like because people who are on there making that content they figured out what works you know what i mm-hmm, mean mm-hmm. And, and they've gotten comfortable with just letting it letting it happen or i'm sure there's people with well i know there's people with just draft after draft of useless mm-hmm. shit because you just throw up whatever whenever mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and hope that it sticks so yeah yeah exactly it's and just a matter of getting to to the rhythm of mm-hmm. being able to do that right mm-hmm. and talking on camera or this podcast like even think of how much easier it's become to do stuff with the podcast i yeah. think it's hard when you're in the moment or we've even struggled with seeing like the bigger picture of the growth that's happening it doesn't happen overnight that you can fucking read like a news anchor and oh yeah like there's a lot of practice it doesn't i think like where i was getting hung up is that like my adhd is like making me think that i am not capable of doing it because i Mm -hmm. struggle so hard but Mm -hmm. i know deep down that even though i struggle i still have the capability of practicing Mm -hmm. my mind is like a muscle yeah imposter syndrome is like a real struggle of people with adhd i feel because Mm -hmm. you're so um so accustomed to questioning yourself anyway that of course you're going to 
dissect anything you do you know what I mean yeah. because you've just been taught that you do things wrong or yeah. you're too different or, or whatever yes it's the shame of like uh, mm-hmm. yes it's mm-hmm. or just I think it's the comparison for me like I would see how it seems like it's so effortless for people to do things and not understanding where the struggle came from either because I didn't know like all these correlating symptoms I'm just like what is wrong with me like where does this stem from like why am I struggling and I just thought I was weird or like that was like the the only conclusion that I could come to Mm -hmm. before the ADHD diagnosis Mm -hmm. and then like when I kind of fell into that I don't know if we've talked about this before like you start looking up the the facts of it and then you kind of go into like a pity party mode of like oh my god look how disabled I am Mm -hmm. and but it's Mm -hmm. kind of beautiful because then you you Mm -hmm. see all these people that understand how you feel and you're like oh other people don't get it it's kind of like a weird whirlwind that you go through and then you kind of realize like no these labels like might be a part of me or something that I struggle with but it does not mean that I'm incapable it doesn't mean that I'm so vastly different that Mm -hmm. I am disabled it just Mm -hmm. means that I have a different view on life and it's beautiful that other people are going through the same thing Mm -hmm. but it's not somewhere where you need to live yes i think that's like the double-edged sword of um self-diagnosing it is powerful because who knows you better than you you don't have to sit there and explain to yourself what Mm -hmm. these symptoms are you know because yes that you live it but at the same time uh it can be like a a hypochondriac thing where you're suddenly Mm -hmm. gotta catch them all all the mental illnesses yes it's it's a balance like i definitely think um have some sort of idea of what ballpark you may fall in but if you have access to a doctor for sure don't make any drastic moves or changes to your life unless you have some Mm -hmm. outside some outside opinions from someone who's maybe professional, not mm-hmm. necessarily a doctor either, yes, even a therapist. Never know. Like it's the hard p- to get an, uh, into access to a, a doctor, doctor who can truly yes. um, medically diagnose you. I know in Canada and in the states both. So exactly. Um, so the stigma mm-hmm. around diagnosing yourself needs to end yes. because you don't know. Yes, I am twenty three years old, and I just got diagnosed with ADHD, even though mm-hmm. I've been in and out of mental health and I've had issues like and that's a huge thing with ADHD is it goes mm-hmm. undiagnosed and mm-hmm. then I know the struggle or the 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 issue with self-diagnosing is because you become so into it and it, mm-hmm. like it, like I said your brain is like a muscle mm-hmm. when you're taking in all of these oh like disabilities are all these symptoms you're gonna start like um aligning with, yeah. it properly but like you're gonna become engulfed in it mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that's what you're focusing on and then those are all things i can't do this i can't do that yeah i am disabled those are like yeah. like you're constantly especially like adhd talk and shit like that mm-hmm. like i like it but in yes. small doses because then you start going into mm-hmm. oh i am disabled yeah. i am incapable i have I these issues i can't focus i can't focus i yeah. have emotional outbursts and like those are programming in a sense mm-hmm. just like affirmations mm-hmm. i think that um with any illness when well mental illness sorry specifically i can't speak for physical um when you're reading symptoms and um the description of what is going on to you you have to keep in mind that as many problems they are presenting you there's also answers to those problems and that is the good thing about accessing all this information is that now you can name these things and now you know even if you can't think of them off the top of your head and you need to do research or Or shadow work yes or you know what i mean reach out to a spiritual healer or a therapist or whatever it is uh that suits you the best um to help combat these different symptoms and Mm -hmm. whatever is hindering you it's it's good to bring light to these symptoms but don't live there essentially because that's that's the problem that i find even with uh tiktok is because the algorithm switch is so easy when i start liking like adhd talk i'm like by the end of it it's making me feel icky and incapable Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know i know it isn't necessarily true because before this is something else i just thought of that i wanted to bring up like i'm not at all so i just got done um doing group therapy which was amazing Mm -hmm. actually like i i have never received the help that i needed ever up until this point i think a lot of the skills that they teach is called building balance like it's just incredible and it's free Mm -hmm. and i wish that more people in our city would utilize it because it is awesome yeah but one thing that i noticed was before i started the group therapy i feel like 
I was mentally in a better place. Like, I was feeling more high vibe all the time. Yeah. And um, I do think that the group therapy found me for a reason. But mm -hmm. there was a period where it was mostly, I felt, like, in a state of, like, shadow work and mm. contemplation of, like, these things and there was a while where I did feel really incapable but now looking back I realized that I still did challenge myself and I become aware of my like social anxiety even yeah. I didn't realize how bad it truly was up mm -hmm. until I started the group therapy mm -hmm. over zoom mm -hmm. and uh, I think I'm able to grow from it but it was a very uncomfortable period of shadow work oh I would god say. yeah I definitely think it would be for me too mm -hmm. I I I can't even, I won't say can't even, that's mm -hmm. not the right wording. Mm -hmm. I haven't even ventured out to do that yet because it is, like, I have a lot of so social anxiety, mm -hmm. too, so much so mm -hmm. that I can't even put myself out there right now mm -hmm. like that. So definitely mm -hmm. friggin' applaud you for going mm -hmm. through with that because I'm doing, um, I'm going to be doing anyway, like, uh, Zoom meetings where I don't have to talk and it's just going to be, like, a presentation mm -hmm. once a week. But um, I know that my, my, um, doctor's probably gonna end up mentioning that to me mm -hmm. along the down the line and if it if it sticks I'll do it and if it doesn't feel right in the moment I won't mm -hmm. but it's something that I'm more open-minded to now because I have heard your experiences even yeah. with it. it no it is it's the the information in there is extremely useful like I even I've I've t taken what I've learned and I've applied it within my life like for me and I've mm -hmm. also you like I've brought up certain things that I've learned to try to tell to other people because it like it see like a big thing like with me and Hannah when we're talking about like self-development like what we've learned from the internet I think a lot of it is acquainted to spirituality but mm -hmm. this is very tangible and it's very good for people that mm -hmm. don't resonate with that sort of like terminology and there yeah. was just a lot of other things that I learned in it that I was like oh shit I never even thought mm -hmm. of that you said um one of the girls said that they wish that they taught that stuff in school which yeah. I think um is really notable because obviously everyone goes to school so i think that everyone could probably grasp what's going on oh in yeah it should be a fucking class mm -hmm, dude like mm -hmm. it's emotional regulation and assertiveness yeah, and self-esteem mm -hmm. and all of that are things that should be taught to ch little children so they don't end up down a destructive self-hating path mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's what happens when your mental health goes unchecked and it should be manageable if you had the tools from when you were a kid to not develop these mm -hmm. patterns these destructive patterns that are so heavily ingrained in your brain mm -hmm. then you would be way better off but mm -hmm. you know they're not teaching it for a fucking reason oh like, for sure they don't want us to thrive they mm -hmm. want us to be miserable mm -hmm. and complacent <laughs> the awesome thing is though because it's kind of our generation that um is going through this collectively because i feel like the resources have sort of just sprung up our next generation is going to be so well prepared because i see tiktoks of parents doing like these emotional regulation text techniques with the their kids and like Love it. handling yeah anxiety attacks and i'm like holy crap if yes. someone did that to me as a child like it, I'm, t I'm getting chills just know, talking just about it too. yeah <laughs> like it it uh the common sense that is now common sense oh, that I, love it. I wish that yeah was back when we were kids is it's astounding mm. astounding for sure and i also wanted to note that it's not we're not even at all ever blaming like our parents oh, specifically God, no. like it's generational and mm. this is a big learning experience that mm -hmm. takes a while but yes. i think that it's really starting to um take a turn for the better mm -hmm. like and happen just, collectively I don't know, maybe it's just tiktok that we're being <laughs> no you know what i do believe it i think that yeah i don't think we're in like a, a, that much of an echo mm -hmm. like chamber i think that the mental health uh, community is kind of yeah it starts around. it starts from children too it really does yeah. like that's where i like obviously a lot of us have to reflect back and see where a lot of our emotional issues stem from mm -hmm. is it doesn't even matter if your parents were a godsend. Like, it could be the way that your own emotional reactions were... Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Predisposition. Yes, mm -hmm. like, or what's the word? Like, the, how they were reinforced. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. if, like, even you think of kids that grew up more, like, spoiled brat type. Like, that yeah. is from a positive reinforcement yeah. that has... Um, uh, stolen your opportunity to experience life. The long, yeah, the long... Uh, dopamine intake or uptake you know what I mean or, yeah or like you don't have a grasp on how life works so you end up overreactive mm -hmm. when life um throws curveballs at you that you're mm -hmm. unable to handle without mm -hmm. your parents or it yeah. creates dependency like there's so many it doesn't the stigma around childhood trauma like it's not that mm -hmm. it's just 
it's something Childhood natural. programming, maybe we could use lighter terminology. Yeah, yeah for sure. Because uh, no matter what, because your child is learning, they're going to learn some good behaviors and some bad mm-hmm. behaviors. And that's just the way she goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, on that note, I feel like we covered a whole bunch of good stuff today. Mm-hmm. This was a really good one, despite yeah. it not being planned at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, 100%. And yeah, it was it was fun, good discussion. Yeah. So if you guys are out there and you have anything to add or ask even, please let us know. We are everywhere. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, thanks to Anchor. We, we <laughs> will also, uh, we're on YouTube and TikTok, of course, and Instagram. Mm-hmm. So give us a shout wherever you can. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, either at the Eureka Effect or at the Eureka Effect podcast, depending on um, the, the platform, website yeah. or the platform. Yeah. Yeah, so on that note, uh, it was nice chatting. Uh, see you guys, in the, or not see you guys, but talk to you guys. Hopefully <laughs> next week. Yes. Hopefully next week. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Bye. Peace.